This is a CBC Podcast. We've heard about an influx of people to New Brunswick from elsewhere in Canada in the past year or so, attracted to this province by the quality of life and the low COVID numbers. Many of them bought houses sight unseen, and apparently in some cases, without much research into the communities they were about to call home. That is what is happening in Rogersville. Angèle Mackay is the village manager, and she joins us now to explain. Good morning. Good morning. So I don't know how much you've been tracking the numbers, but uh, how many people roughly would you say have moved to Rogersville in the last year or so? Well, it's a little bit hard to say just because um, we have so so many unincorporated territories all mm. around us and they get services in town and, and we do serve them, but uh, they're not part of the, the municipal numbers. So it's hard to track, but... Um, based on like the new uh, new kids signed up for school in September and the houses that are being sold, I think at around 50 uh, new families or uh, people moved um, since COVID started. So okay. it's, it's been pretty busy. Yeah, it's significant uh, for a community yeah. the size of, of Rogersville, for sure. Definitely. And uh, where are they yeah. coming from, Angel? Well, they're from a little bit all over the place. We see a mix of um, people that are originally from Rogersville that uh, maybe went away and decided to come back closer to their families. There's a lot of that. But there's also a lot of people coming from all over Canada and the world, really. Uh, A lot from Ontario, but a little bit from all over. So what brought them to the community, would you say? Well, I think it's the cost of living is certainly... Um, very tempting because the the houses are much cheaper um, than a lot of the bigger cities and things like that, especially if you're coming out of province. Um, the, it's also the aspect that it's a quiet, uh, quiet community, and but we have all the services you need. So we have, you know, a pharmacy, we have restaurants, we have we have uh, quite a few amenities for a small town, but. Um, with a, a small price tag. Right. So I think that's appealing for a lot of people for either retirement or to move in with the, to raise their families. So how have uh, those newcomers reacted uh, when they found out that Rogersville w- was majority Francophone? Well, I think that from people coming out of province, um, I think a lot of them were surprised because um, the province is officially bilingual. So I think a lot of people assume that, uh, yes, we're a majority Francophone community, but um, we're, we're not the pro- The province is a, a different thing than small communities throughout the province. So um, I think they're, they're a bit surprised that we, we offer uh, all our documentation only in French because we're 91% Francophone. Um, I think they're a bit surprised. Uh, maybe sometimes off-put, but um, we do try to accommodate everyone. We we welcome Anglophones and Francophones into our community, of course, but uh, to translate all of our documents um, that we've had forever and going forward is logistically quite complicated. But how surprised are you that, that they're surprised um, <laughs> that they, they were moving into a, a, a Francophone-majority community? Well, well, I, I don't think I, I can understand their frustration. I think that I think that's um, I know where they're coming from. Um, at the same time, if I were to move into a small Anglophone community uh, in the province, I would not expect to be served in in necessarily served in in French, um, especially not the documentation and things like that. I know a lot of smaller communities might be struggling with this as well because we. We, we've never had to, to really translate before. We've been majority Francophone, but with this new influx, um, it might be changing the game a little bit. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm surprised a little bit that they're surprised, but at the same time, if you figure that, you know, the province is, is completely bilingual, you would assume that all the, all the cities and towns would be as well. And what does it mean for for families uh, of school age children who uh, who don't speak French? Uh, what will happen there? Well, if they, I'm not quite sure what the rules are, but I know that if they do have immediate family that can speak French um, to help them out, they are allowed to 
to to put their children into our Francophone school system in Rogersville. But if they're completely English and they don't intend to learn French, they have to travel usually to Miramichi for school. That means a long bus ride. So that has happened a few times that uh, families with school-age children don't necessarily realize that we don't have an Anglophone or bilingual um, school, so they have to travel quite a bit. Oh, well, I'm sure you're happy to see your community growing, and I'm sure people in your community have Absolutely. been very welcoming. But but what concerns do you have, though, if if it becomes more and more Anglophone? What, what implications could that have? Uh, well, I mean, if we were to, because the, the municipal law says in this province that we would have to translate everything if the if the percentage of anglophones would surpass or equal 20 percent right now we're at about nine percent anglophone in the community of course there's a new numbers might come out of the the census but for us if we were to have to translate everything we would have to choose um, what we do put out as information, because we do serving people in English for sure. If they come into the office, if they call, we, we always absolutely serve them in English. But if we have to translate all of our bylaws and policies, that would mean having to hire a translator. That would mean have to try, have to adopt those documents all over again from council. I think that logistically, logistically would be very um, costly to the taxpayers. But if it do, does come to that, we council will have to make a decision, decision then for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you'd be required to. to if provide we're required it. to, yes, or if the demand from the community would be so great. Um, Anglophones and also Francophones, if that's something they really want in the community, we would have to put a lot of resources towards translating everything. So that that would be a tough decision to be to have to be made um, with council and the taxpayers as well. Where where there are bars, bosses at the end of the day, and we have to allocate funds towards that. So that would be um, quite a big decision. We might. We have a monthly newsletter, for example, that we print in French and we send out to uh, even the surrounding unincorporated territories. And we that's we make it in-house and we print it and we send it. And uh, if you were to have to translate that in, into English, um, I'm just not sure it would be possible to, to be able to do it every month. So it, we would definitely have to change a lot of things that we currently do. Um, not to say that we're not open to the idea of making changes, but it also has to come from the community. Yeah, such an interesting predicament yeah. to be in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's quite. It's, uh, we've had this problem for a little bit. Not a problem, but it's definitely uh, something that we deal with. And uh, but with this big influx of uh, new families coming in, it's definitely become amplified. So how do you handle it in the future? I mean, how do you balance that? Oh, you know, yes, we we welcome new people into our community, but, you know, heads up, these are some things that, that you need to know if you're interested in moving here. Yeah, I think it, um, and and I think all throughout New Brunswick, I, I, I think we're not used to people wanting to move to New Brunswick <laughs> in big car loads like this. So I, <laughs> it was a quick, Quick change. Um, I think there might need to be something provincially um, to kind of, you know, kind of warn people that move into this province. You know, we're so happy to have you, but just a little heads up. This is, you know, it's not a bilingual province in the same way that people might assume. Um, Because I'm sure that people are having issues, you know, other communities are having this issue as well, either on the Francophone or the Anglophone side. So I think that either, you know, real estate agents and just kind of um, information on maybe our websites or, on you know, all of the communities or the province would have to kind of um, warn people in advance how our system works throughout the province, I think would be very helpful. I, I sure would not like to move to, you know, a town and figure out after you move in that, you know, things are done a certain way. So I, I certainly would 
love for people to have all the information before they move. All right. Well, best of luck with, with everything. And uh, thanks so much all for right. taking our call. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Okay, you too. Bye. Bye-bye. For more CBC Podcasts, go to cbc.ca slash podcasts.